Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of Pretty Lonesome. This week, I want to talk about the rotten girl aesthetic. I don't think you could quite call it that, but I'm going to call it that, the rotten girl aesthetic, because why not? We should have our own aesthetic. I came up with this term because everyone kept yapping on about the clean girl aesthetic, which for me felt so vastly out of reach because that is never going to be the way my life looks. As much as I may want it to be, as much as I may sit in this new car that is currently clean and have the like the the resources to appear like I'm a clean girl, it simply is not authentic to me in any way. The way I live my life is with the utmost chaos. I'm not saying this is a good thing. The way I live my life is with the utmost chaos and disorganization and that leads to mess. It leads to rotting food. It leads to being a rotten girl. And what I meant when I said rotten girl is I was envisioning my one friend. Now, she won't be offended by this. She would love this. I told her already that she was the inspo for rotten girls. But she has always been the person that I deem like the coolest person because... She was my big sister's friend growing up and also our neighbour. So I was like, just in awe of her. She was just the coolest. In my mind, she was the most grown up. She's actually one year older than me. But like, I just thought she was like a grown adult, grown woman. And I was just, I just thought she was so cool. But she has always been quite violently rotten. She was Effie Stoneham before Effie Stoneham was even that cool. Or no, maybe, maybe that might have been her inspo. But she would like sit on her windowsill and smoke these cigarettes and I just thought she was just the coolest. And that was probably not correct of me, but there you go. That's what I did. That's what I thought. That's how I felt. And she has always just been someone that I think is so cool because she's always been someone that has their struggles and goes about life and kind of in the in this most interesting way takes everything in her stride. And just like, for me... The first time I ever struggled in life, my life grinded to a halt. I couldn't struggle and continue living because I was young and I didn't have any coping skills. So I locked myself inside and I couldn't go to school and I lost all my friends and I just didn't speak to anyone for two years. And she was this person who struggled and went to school and had a job. And I just thought that was the coolest thing you could ever do to be able to continue living despite hardship. Like that was just something I could not do at that age and over the years obviously I learned how and I always just thought that she was so lucky because she could go outside and come home and be miserable but she could go out during the day and so she kind of gave me almost inspiration to become the same I was never aspiring to be a clean girl or to be anything more than coping than like coping in a way that also allowed me to go out and see the world so to me being a rotten girl is an honor because it means that I am doing what I need to do to get by but it is also something that I just find a little bit humorous because I just think it's such a treat like one thing I've never been bothered by is what someone does in their own fucking time and I'll never understand people who are bothered by it if someone wants to go home and, I don't know, put on a fucking fursuit, let's say, and and lock themselves in a in a baby cage and suck on a pacifier, that's none of my business. You know what I mean? Like, do what you need to do. If I want to go home and let my dinner rot in my bedroom, let me do that. And also, like, I'm still going to wake up in the morning and wash my face and put on my deodorant and put on an outfit and go out into the world and do my thing. But I want to come home and retreat into chaos. And that is what I will do. I like the idea that you can allow yourself to regress into like the worst version of yourself. And that it is completely safe to do so because that is your space. And I find it thrilling to imagine like, I don't know, it's kind of like, did you guys ever see that episode of Friends when Ross, I think it's Ross, starts dating a girl and I cannot remember her name, but his her apartment is like a pigsty and she has a mouse or a rat on the loose, but she can't ever find the rodent because she's got so much crap on her floor, but you can just hear it scuttling around and she's named it. It's a completely feral rodent, by the way. It's like not her pet. And she's named it Mitzi. Now, I took inspiration from this character. I saw this episode when I was like 12. 
And I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. I just thought she was living her best life. Like it really struck a chord with me. I was like, I relate. I like this girl. This is me. And because I like her and she is me, I now wish to own a rodent and I wish to name it Mitzi. Guys, I wish I was fucking joking. I went to my mom the next day. I said, I need to buy a rabbit. My mom was like, you can't have a rabbit. And I was like, well, why? Give me one good reason. Anyway, two days of going back and forth and I won my mom over. My mom loves animals. So anytime I would ask for a pet when I was younger, it just didn't take much. And we had like so many, we, we only ever had rodents. We never wanted to commit to like a dog or a cat. But anytime I'd be like, what about a new hamster? She'd be like, oh, okay, let's go get one. But it was the only thing my mum was easy to persuade on. Like, my mum really stood her ground with me on everything else. But, like, the second I was like, how about a mouse? She'd be like, oh, my God, yeah, let's treat ourselves. Like, she was so funny. So after seeing this girl have this rodent called Mitzi, I was like, I must have one. And so I went and I bought a rodent and I called it Mitzi. And she was my first rabbit. She lived for, like, 10 years. I loved I loved her so much. She was the absolute best. Actually, she didn't live for 10 years because then she'd still be alive. But she lived for, like, seven or eight years, I think. She, like, died not that long ago she was so cute she was like a really rabbity looking rabbit she was like blonde and just like had the big ears and she was the best so needless to say i've identified with the uh ilk of unhygienic girls women for an extended period of time now so it's not surprising that i've grown up to be someone who does tend to live in filth I think there's something to be said for how much your respect for yourself is reflected in your surroundings. And I think certain people just hold different weight to their surroundings than others. And I think that's fine. For me, my self-respect, quote unquote, was never reflected by my surroundings. Like I don't typically feel like I love or hate myself any more or less based on how clean my bedroom is. Now, there are exceptions to that. There have been times in my life where it's like, wow, like you can't function in this. This is bad. This is actually ruining your day. That's when things change. But when it's just like not the clean girl aesthetic and your room's just a bit of a mess and you're just a person living your life, maybe there's a bowl of food in the corner or a moldy coffee, whatever, right? It's a bit, bit worse than it should be, but it's not dire, you know? It's just gotten bad. I never feel like that has anything to do with the way that I respect myself or the way that I'm treating myself. And I think that that kind of comes from like living in unattractive spaces because I have never lived in a place. Actually, that's not true. I think when I was at university, I lived in really ugly accommodation and it was the first time I'd ever moved out. So it was the first time I'd lived anywhere but home. And it was bad. Like, it was the cheapest or, like, the second cheapest accommodation. It looked like a jail cell. Like, it was one of those rooms with, like, the super old beds, like, not been refurbished since, like, the 60s. The walls were a salmon-y, pinky white, and they were a brick that had been painted on. There was, like, a strange little sink in the corner, a big desk. Nothing was, like, stuck to the walls. There was nothing modern. Everything was made out of wood. And then the bed was, like, a this thin metal frame and then there was a little tiny window and that was it that was the room and it had a blue carpet it was miserable like it wasn't attractive and so I think from that kind of set tone for me of like my surroundings cannot impair my mentality I don't have a choice here like this isn't if I'm gonna go oh my god this room is fucking depressing I'm gonna be unhappy or oh this room doesn't look good so I'm not gonna go and make myself a clean girl breakfast or oh this isn't like organized and it doesn't look cute in here so what's the point in sitting and doing really aesthetic revision with all my highlighters and all this bullshit and their life looks simple and easy because they don't work the average job which is why they can afford their high rise even if you go and you buy matcha and you go and you buy the little thing to swirl it with you can't change that so easily like it's not that simple it's not oh if you do this you'll you'll look like this and your life will look like this and it'll be this easy like it's, it's not true and so I actually think that living in directly unpleasant places was the most valuable lesson for me because it taught me that I can only rely on my internal state to accomplish what I want to accomplish and that my external state has very little to do with it because 
yes, it's nice to have a clean room. And that usually does help, especially if you're feeling down. You probably want your room to be clean. It's just nice. It's just going to help you. You're just going to wake up feeling a little bit fresher. And yes, you shouldn't have rotting food in your room. It doesn't smell good and it's unhygienic. I get it. But it's also not the be all and end all. You can still be successful and you can still create the life that you want regardless of your surroundings. I feel like a lot of people, because of this clean girl aesthetic, could be in be in a position to end up feeling like they're further behind than they actually are because they don't have the right look. They don't have the right surroundings. Oh, but they have acne, so they can't achieve the clean girl aesthetic. Or their hair doesn't go back in a ponytail that neatly. Like, whatever it is that makes you unable to match that clean girl aesthetic, your surroundings or your hair or your skin, you are not as far back as you think you are because your internal workings are all still there and they may be at a much higher advantage point than any of these girls that you're seeing online. Like, I just could imagine being at university, still being a first year, or even being in high school, and seeing all of this content around clean girl and minimalism and yoga and fucking Pilates and be like, oh my god, I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not where I need to be in life, why doesn't my life look like this? And I would end up probably feeling like I'm further behind than I am, when realistically... I'm at university, I'm getting a degree, I'm opening so many doors for myself, I'm networking every day of my life with people at school. It just doesn't look pretty. And that is a really dangerous thing to like start to believe, oh, it doesn't look pretty, there's an issue, or I'm not good enough, or what I'm doing isn't going to work. And it's also just like, how vulnerable that would make you if you actually believe that, that your surroundings have that big of a hold over how much worth you have or how clean you are. Like, trust me, when I was living in an ugly university hall with a shower covered in mould, like, I was still clean. I never smelt bad. I brushed my teeth in the mornings, you know what I mean? I still hit all the correct demands to be doing what I should have been doing in terms of I'm cleaning myself and I'm going to my classes and I'm doing everything I need to do, I'm feeding myself, you know? I've seen some criticism where people are like, oh, you know, these girls, they post like in their messy rooms and and they make it look like it's okay and it's normal. But what you need to realize is they get paid for this and you don't and it's marketing and you should make an exerted effort to not be like this and not or not to not be like this, but basically kind of warning young girls that this isn't the best way to live and it's not completely normal. And, you know, you should be aware that most adults don't live in filth and that just the ones that you are seeing are living in filth that kind of messaging to like basically just to younger girls of like just be aware that this is something that they're paid for and I get it I always feel like a sense of responsibility to younger people to be like to show them the way and like tell them and not show them the way but like to you just have a duty of care I think just as a human being you have a duty of care to others but also especially to those younger than you and to those more vulnerable than you which is a young person on social media is like the epitome of vulnerable and so I agree with it and I think that it's always good to be aware that not everybody lives the way that I live and not everybody is as inclined to be okay with living in a messy room as maybe I am. Maybe it does affect some people's mental state a lot more than it affects mine. I don't know. I'm not them. I'm me. But I could imagine that that would be the case. I think I don't have an issue with the clean girl aesthetic. I love it. And it it kind of does motivate me. But it also, it just motivates me to like get a new fucking flat. Like live in a new build. Like that's kind of as far as it motivates me. Like it doesn't really make me want to go to the gym because it's not going to look like that. It's not going to feel like that. Like I said earlier, like I would want to go to the gym if I lived in her apartment but I don't. Like, if I lived in her apartment with her clean bedding and her big windows that look out onto the city, then maybe I would feel inclined to go to the gym in my building in my cute set of Lululemon. Like, it would interest me then. But it doesn't because I don't. You know what I mean? And that's fine. I I don't want to be motivated by that because I don't think that that lifestyle would serve me any more than the one that I live right now does. Because I'm just not that kind of person, which is fine. I am much more inclined to enjoy driving around the countryside and that's going to be much more refreshing on my mental health than going to the gym most days. Most days, a trip around the countryside in my car is just going to do way more for me. 
And it's just about figuring out what works for you. And I don't love the criticism that I see towards girls who live in mess, who live in squalor. It's it's also just like, why is it an issue? I mean, I mean, I don't love the idea that it's something that young girls see a lot of, right? I don't love the idea that young girls are seeing all their favorite adults living in mess and being unhygienic. Obviously, that is not good, right? Obviously, you don't want that. But I don't really think that we're at risk of that. I feel like it's so saturated in social media. Like, you'll see me, who's rotten, and then three posts down, you're seeing a girl who's gone to the gym three times today because she's doing 75 fard and her apartment's spotless. And she, by the way, she's also got 20 children and she raises them all by herself somehow. Like, I feel like there's good representation for everyone on the internet at the moment. Because I guess, I guess I've seen people be like, you should be careful how much content or how much you believe that these girls really live in mess because they could pay to get it cleaned or they don't have to live like this. And it's like, no, I don't. And yes, I could pay to get it cleaned. But first of all, if I wanted to, I would. I just haven't because I don't care. But second of all, I think the issue that I take with that is like, but why is it so wrong? Because I'm actually an educated woman. I have a degree. I graduated with honors. The pressure to be perfect is something that's been talked about so much on social media over the years. And it's weird because I've seen no discourse about it when it comes to the clean girls. It's just interesting to me. Like, you can see these 12-year-olds trying so hard to replicate the adults who are buying expensive skincare and putting them on in the mirror and clearly feeling great doing an everything shower and like if it if they're already replicating the skincare like I'm sure it doesn't stop there you know I I, I guess it's it's just it's a money issue as well because you're never gonna see the girl with no money doing fucking drunk elephant routines in the morning before school in her room that's super cute in the background and and um their quiet peaceful house at 7 a.m. I don't even know how these girls have time for those videos. My home at 7 a.m. on a school morning, there was not a moment of silence. I don't know. All my all my school mornings were chaotic. Like I I'm amazed every time I see like a girl having time to put her makeup on before school in the morning. I'm like, wow. I didn't even have time to eat cereal. Like I was up and out. Like, and my friend was my neighbor my whole life. She used to tell me she'd hear my feet smacking the pavement so aggressively because we live on like at the top of a hill and she lived at the bottom of the hill. And so I'd be like running down it and my feet would be like smacking the ground so aggressively as I ran down it because I'd like lose control of myself because I'd be running to the bus because I'd always be late and nine times out of ten I was late to school. So props to them because they're obviously getting up on time. I have seen criticism about the whole rotten girl aesthetic, I think, because people kind of have the idea that it's not good for the younger generation to have that something to look up to. I think it's really important to be mindful about why you're seeing what you're seeing or why someone has posted what they've posted and always look beneath it if you want to be mindful about the media that you consume. But I also find it interesting because I feel like there should be more criticism on the clean girl aesthetic like i mean there should be criticism on everything everything should be thought about critically if you have the fucking time and willpower and energy right if that's how you want to live your life and live your life really mindfully then you should be thinking about everything that you consume why did this person post a picture of their messy room why did this person post a picture of their clean room because most people don't live like that like i the videos that i can genuinely fuck with is i saw this video like three days ago and it was this guy and he had a couple of kids and his wife was taking a nap and he was like i have a dinner party for like 20 people tomorrow and this is the state of my house then he went through and he cleaned up gen like actually cleaned up a house that was like messy but like just it was just mess and like there was no like filth it was just mess everywhere and i just thought this is the only true content i've probably consumed in like three weeks this is the first real person I've seen on my For You page in weeks. Like, <laughs> this is a genuine human with an actual situation that they've actually exposed on the internet. But it's, it's like all this fake nonsense, like fake elevation that people do. Like, they rent a fake car that's not theirs. Like, they rent a G-Wagon or like... I just find it so draining. And it's really hard to tell. Like, when I was on the other side, before I like worked in the industry... When I was on the other side just watching, I would never have thought that it was fake. Like, I just, there was, there's things that are so subtle. Rented apartments, rented cars, rented clothes. Do you realize that people rent their fucking clothes? They rent their handbags? Like, 
all this bullshit, you have to consume your media carefully or not, or you don't. It depends how much it affects you, I guess. Like for me as a relatively stable, I say relatively, we all know I'm not, but like as a functioning some sort of adult, I can consume that kind of media and not be affected by it because it doesn't appeal to me. I know what I like. I like a little bit of mess and it doesn't bother me. And I like my old broken down car. I'm also lucky enough to have a car that keeps me safe and starts every day. So I can kind of appease myself in both ways. I can drive my old car and feel super at home and and just so comfortable and happy. And, and I can also drive my new one when I need to go out of town and be safe and, and film podcasts in it because the fucking heated seats keep me warm. It's minus five degrees today so there's no way I was going to film in the one without heating you know what I mean I have control over my life and I know what I like because I've tried to do things that I don't like and I've thought that sucks I won't do that one again I could imagine how hard it would be as a kid to have all these different influences I just think the amount of influences is overwhelming and everything is always changing like one minute you're meant to be clean girl then the next you're meant to be a mob wife and you're only 12 it's too much. Like, I'm just kind of at my wits end with the For You page right now. Like, it's just, it's over, it's just fucking overload. And I'm just like, what are you guys talking about? What do you mean mob wife? What do you mean clean girl? What do you mean high face value or high face fucking weight? Low face weight. Eat your carrots and you'll get a natural tan. Like, ins and outs I know I just did an episode on ins and outs I actually like the ins and outs trends because it kind of inspires me a little bit but like there's just so much bullshit everywhere I think actually the most refreshing thing for me when I got on social media and like started to be invited into rooms with other people is to see how much of it's just a facade I've just seen my mum run down our house path because she's forgotten something she's so cute I see her running through the house <laughs> my mum is so tiny she's somehow my mum is so tiny I don't think I'm that small but like I'll stand next to my mum in the mirror I'm like only like an inch or two bigger than her but then I look at her and I'm like you are the smallest woman I've ever seen in my life she's like five foot one I mean obviously I'm like six foot two so there is a big height difference but I think what's important to remember as well is you know what's never gonna trend on TikTok or any social media is the average life trend like that's never gonna happen for so for obvious reasons but let me state them anyway because i think it genuinely skips over the brains of some people no one is interested in seeing their own life played out on a screen most people go to the internet to escape an aspect of their real life right so the last thing you want is to click on and see your exact situation played out on a screen do you want someone who is a little bit better than you, but with aspects of your life? So it's attainable, they're relatable, you see yourself in it, but in a desirable way, right? That is the premise of social media. It's all a projection of the self. What do people want to see on their screen? Well, they want to know how they can improve their life. They want to have a, they want to see something desirable or funny or really depressing. But what they don't want to see is exactly what they have already because that's never satisfying. So whilst 99% of the population lives in one way, the people on the internet will never show that. They'll never live that. And if they do live like that, they won't put it on the screen. They'll, they'll make it look way worse or they'll make it look way better, right? So that's why these stupid fucking things trend, like hot girl, clean girl, rotten girl, stinky girl, poopy girl. We should make that trend. But you know what I mean? Like, yes, we it's like we trick ourselves by loving like relatable influencers. But what you've got to realize is if they were completely relatable, they would never have made it to the point they're at because you don't want to watch yourself on a screen. You wouldn't find it interesting. You already live that life. You're already seeing it through first person POV 23 hours a day. So you want one hour of the day where you get to watch someone else be a little bit elevated but still relatable or be a little bit de-elevated and it's interesting then. Ultimately, you want to see something different. So most people will put out something different, meaning they're not going to put out what the average person does. So even if you see a clean girl, the chances are she doesn't even live like that herself. It's like a model. They don't even look like that. Like maybe I post a picture of my room when it's at its messiest 
And then every other day of the week, it's only half of that. You know what I mean? Like, why did I feel inclined to take the picture of my rug when it was that bad? Well, because it was that fucking bad that I walked in there and went, <gasps> and I laughed and I took a picture. You know what I mean? Like, something provoked me to put that content out. Well, probably because it shocked even me. You know what I mean? Like, it, you don't post things that are completely mundane. And a lot of people do a very good job of hitting the balance between something that is mundane enough to be relatable, but not mundane enough at all to be interesting. And that is social media, right? That's the whole point of it most of the time. Well, it's the whole point of TikTok. I think other social media channels maybe have different purposes, but I think the point of TikTok and influencers in general, have we just like cracked a code or am I just like stupid and I've never thought about this before? But like, I think, but yeah, I think that's, it seems like such a basic fact of life. Like, of course they wouldn't post something boring, but it's like, okay, then you've got to think about why is this thing boring versus this thing not being boring? What is the psychology behind what they're doing? Or they might not even be thinking about it consciously themselves. I think a lot of people who are successful on social media don't even know why what they do works. They just are so attuned to the app and to what works and what doesn't because we're children of the internet and we just know what resonates and what doesn't resonate, they probably don't even know why they're posting that. You know what I mean? But I could almost promise you that like, if you went behind the scenes to the clean girl houses, they wouldn't even live like that the other percent of the time. They probably clean before the videos and they probably don't clear up their fucking matcha ingredients after they've posted it. You know what I mean? I mean, they might, I don't know. When I have the privilege of a clean room or a hotel that's been cleaned, I'm so excited. I feel so good. I might be more inclined to take an everything shower and then get to get into bed and do my little things. But it's a novelty and it'll wear off. And then I need to go back to being in filth and squalor and, oh my God, where are my shoes? And throw them on and run out the door at full speed because I'm late. That's fun to me. Everything is fun. Life is fun. You need variation. You can't just be clean all the time. And equally, you really can't be messy all the time either because you need to break that up with periods of cleanliness and and overt organization in a way you know life is a spectrum of things it's messy and it's nuanced and it's that's why it's fun I love life so much and I always have done even like in every phase of life I've never regretted anything that I've done and I've never hated where I am I remember when I was in my first year of university I just moved and I was in my first set of halls I ended up moving out of them and moving into the cheaper ones because I realized I couldn't afford the nice one. So I was in this like really modern, it was a terrible design. Like it was bright orange. Like why? And it just kind of looked like a cheap hotel room. And it was just really hard to make myself feel at home. It felt clinical. And um, I didn't like any of my flatmates. So I was really homesick and I really hated university. Like I just, I was like, this is just not what I envisioned. I had this like pit in my stomach. It was 2019 or 2018, can't remember. And I listened to Noah Khan. Is it Khan? I, I never know how to say his surname. But I listened to him every minute of the day. And I would just call my best friend from home and like cry down the phone. Like, I fucking hate it here. I want to come home. And then I remember at the time thinking, should I drop out? And I said, I'll wait it out till Christmas and then I'll like reevaluate. And I remember thinking, I feel so strongly that there is a greater purpose to me being at this university and I didn't know what it was but I was like I just have this gut feeling that I'm not necessarily here for my lectures or for my seminars and that this is an experience that I need to facilitate something much greater in the future and I couldn't put my finger on it and I didn't know what it was and I just had this feeling and this instinct that I this is where I needed to be and that because it was hard was not a reason to run away from it or to leave in the name of comfort you know what I mean I was like yeah it's hard life is hard and yes this is unpleasant but you know what am I here for like a life full of pleasantries like that wasn't really what I thought I was in for so you know why am I running away because this is unpleasant I didn't think it was always going to be fun and so I forced myself to stay and I would say I mean, that was four years ago. And now I would look back on that feeling and I would say, ultimately, the reason I didn't leave was, in the end, university was what facilitated me 
doing what I do now because it gave me life experiences to talk about. It created my personality as it is today. It completely transformed me as a person. Was it fun? Not really. <laughs> Did I like it? Not much. Did I learn a lot? Not much. Like, I can't remember much of what I learned at university, I'll be honest. I was reading my dissertation on my laptop the other day and I was like, God, I used to be so smart. Like, I don't even know what those words mean anymore. Like, genuinely not a fucking clue. But my point with that is I've always been certain that any kind of life experience leads to something good. You know what I mean? And I've never thought of anything that I've gone through as having a permanent negative effect. So the fact that I can never clean my room and that I've tried and tried, but I always end up with dirty dishes by my bed and I always end up leaving my towel on the floor, which is unhygienic, and I always have a messy vanity and my mirror always has smudge marks on it and my floor is always covered in clothes and I leave my dirty underwear in the bathroom and all these things, I cannot possibly let myself see them as like a devaluing characteristic almost. Like I just rebuke it, you know? Like maybe, I don't know, it's so tricky because I don't want to encourage anyone to like live in squalor. But I I just, I hate the idea that anything is innately in, in and of itself going to ruin something for you. You should have the ability to live amongst and endure many, many things and still come out on top. And I think it's a really good life lesson. But then I'm also like, oh, you know, you should make life as easy for yourself as possible. And, you know, maybe that's just like clean your room. And I clean my room frequently. Like, th let me, let me, I feel like I'm making it something I never clean my room and I just love living in mess. I clean my room all the time. I'm going to clean it today. I clean it like last week as well. And when I say clean, I mean like properly clean. Um, but then it gets messy in between because I'm not someone that picks up after myself. I have raging ADHD. I just don't pick up after myself and it doesn't bother me. But then I do go through and I clean and I take care of myself and I make sure that I'm living in a nice area, you know? But I guess what I'm saying is like, I think it's too easy to feel like something makes or breaks you. Like, I'll be happy when I have drunk elephant moisturizer and I'm going to be so clean and so good when I get this new t-shirt, this new sweater that's going to make me look like this person. And like, when I'm on trend with this, everything's going to feel good again. Like, it bothers me. And I was like really adverse to like posting a podcast like this because I was like, no, because it's going against the grain and it's saying something that a lot of people are not saying. And I don't want to like get told off for it and be like, have people fucking quote me with their opinions but it's kind of just like I don't know I still don't want any of those things <laughs> you know what I'm doing this year um is I'm starting to reduce my sugar intake when it's not necessary like I keep sweets in my car well they're not sweet well they are sweets they're like you know humbugs they're like basically like mint candy um I keep a bunch of them in my car because they're so fun to suck on like while you drive if you're bored and they're also really good if you're trying to quit smoking. I, again, I hate talking about this, but like, I just hate seeing the word smoking. Like, it feels so unclean. I hate it. Yeah, because I fucking hate unclean things. Um, But like, I hate it. I used to smoke and I still struggle occasionally. Like, I just, it's like, I just am so used to having something in my mouth or in my hands, non sexual way but like I'm so used to just having like a busy mouth busy hands like always holding something or or craving to hold something and it's such like a habit that's still so ingrained in me even though I've broken the addiction and I've broken the habit but I do still struggle sometimes with like I just wish I had that right now and so sometimes having sweets is really helpful for that especially when I drive because I always used to smoke when I would drive so um I've been using these humbugs to fucking cope and then I just kind of realized like how bad they are for me. And I was like, I have dental issues, right? I've always needed really like bad fillings. Like I have an issue with my mouth. My mom took me to this like dental specialist when I was like seven because I kept getting cavities and no one could really figure out why because I was brushing my teeth as much as they should have been. And so then I went to the specialist in London and he made me drink, and we were so disgusting. He made me drink like half a cup of the thickest syrup you could imagine. I was literally retching. And he made me drink the whole thing. It was awful. I've never gotten over it. 
And then he made me blow into this mouthpiece. And he said that the level of acidity in my saliva was something like 60 times what it should have been after consuming the amount of sugar that I'd consumed, which is why my teeth were eroding so quickly. So, sorry, it's kind of gross. I have an acidic mouth. I didn't really want to open up to you guys about that, but there we go. So I have like this really weird acidic mouth, basically. And, um, and so I've always tried to be cautious about how much like unnecessary sugar I put on my teeth. And I actually kind of forgot about that for years, but I, I should try and be more careful. And then you if you watched last week's episode of Pretty Lonesome, I was talking about my new, how tea is in for 2024 and how that kind of chimes in with me drinking less wine and stuff. And And as part of that, I've also been trying to reduce, essentially just reduce the amount of things that I consume that aren't good for me. So I'm not trying to do anything too huge or too crazy, like no more sugar, no more dairy, no more this, no more that. No, it's just like keeping humbugs in my car. I'm just trying not to eat as many of them. It doesn't mean I don't have to. It doesn't mean I can never have one again. They're still in here. They're in my little console. But like, I'm just trying to like not reach for them as often because it's just not good for me. And like just little tiny changes where it's like, yeah, some days I won't take sugar in my coffee. And then maybe the next day I will. And it's not, I've not ruined anything because I had sugar in my coffee today because I didn't set the goal that I was never going to do that again. But I'm proud of myself because I'm gradually reducing my usage, you know? It's just like implementing change where you can. It's like I don't eat meat very often. So I consider myself better than most. <laughs> I'm kidding. I meant to say something else, but that just came out. <laughs> So I don't eat meat very often, which I just think it's, you know, it's better than people who eat meat once or twice a week because it's so bad for the earth. And I do give a fuck about that stuff. So it's like, I don't eat meat very often, but I love meat and it's good for you sometimes. And I really like red meat and I do very occasionally find myself really craving red meat, which I usually know means my iron is low. So when that happens, which is probably like four times a year I think like I so rarely find myself craving meat that whenever I do I'll usually go out and buy myself some meat because it's my body is actually saying something to me it's not like an addiction or like something I just habitually do it's like oh my god I can't believe I've just craved that so I'll go out and I'll get it which is like four times a year maybe max but yeah I usually get scared of eating meat though because I hear that if you stop for an extended period of time you basically lose the ability to like fight off a lot of the bacteria in the meat so if you've like been a hard veggie for like 10 years and then you go and eat chicken, you're probably going to get sick, which is really scary. So that's also a reason that I try and eat meat a couple of times a year is like to keep up that like immune response to it and like re make sure that my immune system remembers what the fuck it is because I hate getting sick. So we don't want that. So yeah, I eat meat a couple of times a year. What the fuck was my point? <laughs> Everyone needs to know that I eat meat a couple of times a year. I'm so glad it's also staying light out for longer now. It's currently it's currently 2.52 p.m. And the sky is still, like, relatively blue. It's just so much nicer. Like, even an extra 30 minutes on the end of the day is just so special. Like, I hate when it gets dark early. Like, I like winter. I like the cold. I have no issue with the cold as long as I have the means to be warm. Like, a good jumper and a good pair of sweats and a good pair of shoes. Like, then, as long as I can bundle up, I'm happy in the cold but it's like when you're stuck and you're cold all day that's what I hate like I used to work outdoors actually I didn't work outdoors but I worked it well it was indoors but there was no heating and it had like only half of a wall there might be some white noise now because my car engine is on because I think I need to let it run to charge up because I get the impression that I've run the battery down it said 12v battery c owner's manual what does that mean? I don't want to break this car. So I'm going to let it run. Sorry if you can hear the engine. Hopefully you can't. I was going to do an episode today on how to enjoy your own company. And then I ended up doing this one instead. So maybe I'll do that next week. But I probably will forget. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about it now. Because I don't know. I've got nothing else to say. I Guys, I feel so bad. My dog can see me from inside the house. And she has been watching me. She's at the windowsill the entire time I've been out here. And I know she is confused. Like, why are you out there and why am I in here? She, I hope she doesn't think she's done anything wrong. 
So I saw a video on TikTok of this girl's cat on like her home security camera and the cat like brought the toy to the camera crying and then like just sat there crying. If that was my cat, if I saw that on my home security footage, I genuinely would quit my job. I would go home so fucking fast. Like, you know what? Animals are such blessings. Like, I, my dog is, like, the biggest thing that keeps me sane recently. And she's just such, like, a steady, certain part of my life. And I love... Actually, she's not fucking steady or certain because she tries to kill herself every three days. You know, she wrecked me up 1,500 pounds worth of veterinary bills because she ate an entire candy cane off of my tree. Did I ever tell you the amount that cost me? 1,500 pounds. She is so lucky I have insurance. Because I don't actually understand how my insurance works. Like, I'm not completely sure if they're going to cover that or if I'm going to have to get it. Anyway, I said to the vet the day that it happened, because I thought she was going to die because I thought the candy cane had xylitol in it. So I was like, she was like, like this is going to be really expensive. Like, we're going to have to admit her overnight or you can take her home for observation. And I was like, no, please, like, money's not a problem. Please just do everything you can. I was like, she in tears. I was like, please, do everything you can. Take her. And then she comes back to me the next day after having so much treatment and so, like, she had a surgery, she had charcoal, she kept, she stayed in for observation overnight, she was on a fucking drip. And they hand her back to me the next day, like, yeah, the candy cane never had any xylitol in it, she's completely fine. So anyways, love her. Oh, she's so lucky that I love her, isn't she, really? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna also, I've been looking at my car this whole video and it is so messy, like, I think because there's grit on the roads right now because it's icy, it's all been like flicking up at my windows and like sludge and stuff. So there's like crap all over my car and it looks filthy. So I'm like, I could take it to the car wash. But then I am under the impression that you're not meant to put nice cars through the big car washes because it like scratches the paintwork or something. But then I'm also like, but those are fun. I don't want to go anywhere else. You know what I mean? So I'm going to Google if it's wise to take this car through like a big machine car wash or if I can go or if it's a better idea to like go get it hand washed I think I think unfortunately I probably should get it hand washed but like I'm not that precious about my paintwork maybe I can just go through the big one this car has this car has a car wash mode whatever the fuck that is I have no idea maybe it's like something like anti-theft because you have to give them your keys I don't know I don't know. I was thinking like car washed, like water sealed, water safe, but like that's obviously not what it is. I don't know. My brain is not functioning. But anyway, thanks guys for tuning into this episode of Pretty Lonesome. I'm going to leave your eardrums now. I'll leave them alone until next week. See you same time, same place next Monday. Oh, guys, the next time I see you, I'm going to be in LA. We're going to do, I have a car. I've rented a car. I'm not going to tell you what the car is because it's a surprise. I've rented one of two things i'm kidding because i didn't rent either of them i rented a complete surprise car so you'll find out when i find out oh yeah it's gonna be so exciting i the request that i've put in is that it's large which everyone told me not to do they were like don't fucking drive a big car around la you don't know how to drive big cars and you don't know how to drive on the other side of the road and i was like you only live once kiddies so i've hired a big car in la so i'm really excited and I'm so, I have so many fun things planned in LA. We're just gonna have so much fun. I'm so excited. I'm excited that we get to go together. And I won't be completely alone because I'll have you guys to talk to. So that's fun. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you next week on next week's episode of Pretty Lonesome. Okay. Love you. Bye.